Hi, Double Reads. Today we're going to go over your embouchure and how to make your first sound. So um, we're going to start with oboe and actually we'll do bassoon also because the embouchure is the exact same. Weird, okay? So you're going to make a whistle face. So if you haven't ever whistled, there's two ways you can whistle. You can whistle out and in. We're going to think outward, okay? So if I'm whistling, my corners are in and everything comes to the center, okay? So this is a double read face. The double read face, we're going to make sure our chin is nice and flat, okay? And everything comes to the middle like you're whistling. So if I'm an oboe player and I've already tried that whistle face and know what it looks like with my mirror, I'm ready for the reed. Now, the reed's very delicate on the tip, so we're going to be very careful not to crush it with our lips, okay? So you're going to set your whistle face first, and then your reed is going to be placed in the middle very carefully. You're not going to put the reed all the way in your mouth. You're barely going to put the tip about here, so it's barely in your mouth, okay? The angle mm -hmm. is about here, okay? It's a little further out than clarinet. Um, aim it past your knees, okay? So I'm gonna start with my whistle face. I place it here. And let my reed hug, um, or let my corners hug the reed on the sides. Okay, so this is what it should look like. I can still see most of the cane up here. Now, if I'm a bassoon player, you're starting with that same whistle face. Okay, but instead, you're going to put the majority of this part of the reed in your mouth. Now, see this wire? Your lips should not be touching the wire, but it's going to get really, really close. And if at any time that you fill this wire, you need to pull it out just a tad to where it's not touching. Okay? So whistle face. Mm hmm. It should be very, very close. Okay? And here, we're going to be holding it with our pinchers. Okay, um, since they're very small. So whistle face, once again. And it goes in almost all horizontally, straight in. And on bassoons especially, your chin comes even lower. Okay, very long faces for double reads. So if you think long face, you're on the right path. So, with our air that we've been practicing, we're going to keep that whistle face, hug the reed with the sides of your corners to keep that, that whistle in, and you're going to blow through the reed, okay? Be very careful that that reed stays barely in your lips for oboes, um, and you're not shoving it in your uh, mouth further, because then you'll get probably some strange sounds, okay? So here's whistle face. Here. Top teeth and uh, bottom teeth are covered. You're holding it with your lips. That is what your first sound should somewhat sound like. So whistle face. Trap, trap. Okay, so that's what you're practicing. Four counts, so you tap, tap, and breathe in, and then blow. Now, your goal is to get a straight sound, not a bumpy sound. So straight sounds are our friend and what we're working for, uh, towards. Now, for bassoons, yours is a little different. Remember, not only are you putting more of this in your mouth, um, the sound's going to be different in a good way, I hope. <laughs> okay, so whistle face. Um. Move around. Tap, tap. Let me try that again. If you're getting that growl sound, that is perfect. That's called a crow. And that's what we're looking for on our bassoon sounds. Sounds weird, I know, but it sounds great when the instrument comes together. Okay? So here's this again whistle face.
<laughs> and that is the crow um, of your bassoon and the sound of your uh, oboe reed. You want to hear an A on the oboe reed. So if you have a tuner, um, if it says A, just a plain old A, you are in good shape. The closer you can get to A, the better you are going to be in tune later on when we have the whole instrument together. Thanks for watching.